a Wikividi Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Blog A blog is a discussion or informational website published on the World Wide Web consisting of discrete, often informal diary-style text entries. Posts are typically displayed in reverse chronological order, so that the most recent post appears first, at the top of the web page. Until 2009, blogs were usually the work of a single individual, occasionally of a small group, and often covered a single subject or topic. In the 2010s, multi-author blogs have developed, with posts written by large numbers of authors and sometimes professionally edited. Mabs from newspapers, other media outlets, universities, think tanks, advocacy groups, and similar institutions account for an increasing quantity of blog traffic. The rise of Twitter and other microblogging systems helps integrate Mabs and single author blogs into the news media. Blog can also be used as a verb, meaning to maintain or add content to a blog. The emergence and growth of blogs in the late 1990s coincided with the advent of web publishing tools that facilitated the posting of content by non-technical users who did not have much experience with HTML or computer programming. Previously, a knowledge of such technologies as HTML and file transfer protocol had been required to publish content on the web, and as such, early web users tended to be hackers and computer enthusiasts. In the 2010s, the majority are interactive Web 2.0 websites, allowing visitors to leave online comments, and it is this interactivity that distinguishes them from other static websites. In that sense, blogging can be seen as a form of social networking service. Indeed, bloggers do not only produce content to post on their blogs, but also often build social relations with their readers and other bloggers. However, there are high readership blogs which do not allow comments. Many blogs provide commentary on a particular subject or topic, ranging from politics to sports. Others function as more personal online diaries, and others function more as online brand advertising of a particular individual or company. A typical blog combines text, digital images, and links to other blogs, web pages, and other media related to its topic. The ability of readers to leave publicly viewable comments and interact with other commenters is an important contribution to the popularity of many blogs. However, blog owners or authors often moderate and filter online comments to remove hate speech or other offensive content. Most blogs are primarily textual, although some focus on art photographs, videos, music, and audio. In education, blogs can be used as instructional resources. These blogs are referred to as edublogs. Microblogging is another type of blogging, featuring very short posts. There were over 156 million public blogs in existence. On the 20th of February 2014, there were around 172 million Tumblr and 75.8 million WordPress blogs in existence worldwide. According to critics and other bloggers, Blogger is the most popular blogging service used today. However, Blogger does not offer public statistics. Technorati lists 1.3 million blogs as of February 22, 2014. History the term, weblog, was coined by Jorn Barger on 17 December 1997. The short form, blog, was coined by Peter Mayerholtz, who jokingly broke the word weblog into the phrase we blog in the sidebar of his blog Peton.com in April or May 1999. Shortly thereafter, Evan Williams at Perilabs used, blog, as both a noun and verb, and devised the term, blogger, in connection with Perilabs' blogger product leading to the popularization of the terms. Origins Before blogging became popular, digital communities took many forms including Usenet, commercial online services such as Genie, Byte Information Exchange and the early CompuServe, email lists, and bulletin board systems. In the 1990s, Internet Forum software created running conversations with threads, Threads are topical connections between messages on a virtual corkboard. From the 14th of June 1993, Mosaic Communications Corporation maintained their 
What's new? List of new websites, updated daily and archived monthly. The page was accessible by a special, What's new? button in the Mosaic web browser. The modern blog evolved from the online diary where people would keep a running account of the events in their personal lives. Most such writers called themselves diarists, journalists, or journalers. Justin Hall who began personal blogging in 1994 while a student at Swarthmore College, is generally recognized as one of the earlier bloggers, as is Jerry Pornell. Dave Weiner's scripting news is also credited with being one of the older and longer-running weblogs. The Australian NetGuide magazine maintained the Daily Net News on their website from 1996. Daily Net News run links and daily reviews of new websites, mostly in Australia. Another early blog was Wearable Wireless Webcam, an online shared diary of a person's personal life combining text, digital video, and digital pictures transmitted live from a wearable computer and iTap device to a website in 1994. This practice of semi-automated blogging with live video together with text was referred to as surveillance, and such journals were also used as evidence in legal matters. Early blogs were simply manually updated components of common websites. However, the evolution of electronic and software tools to facilitate the production and maintenance of web articles posted in reverse chronological order made the publishing process feasible to a much larger and less technical population. Ultimately, this resulted in the distinct class of online publishing that produces blogs we recognize today. For instance, the use of some sort of browser-based software is now a typical aspect of blogging. Blogs can be hosted by dedicated blog hosting services, on regular web hosting services, or run using blog software. Some early bloggers, such as the misanthropic bitch, who began in 1997, actually referred to their online presence as a zine, before the term blog entered common usage. Political Impact an early milestone in the rise in importance of blogs came in 2002, when many bloggers focused on comments by U.S. Senate Majority Leader Trent Lott, Senator Lott, at a party honoring U.S. Senator Strom Thurmond, praised Senator Thurmond by suggesting that the United States would have been better off had Thurmond been elected president. Lott's critics saw these comments as a tacit approval of racial segregation. A policy advocated by Thurman's 1948 presidential campaign. This view was reinforced by documents and recorded interviews dug up by bloggers. Though Lott's comments were made at a public event attended by the media. No major media organizations reported on his controversial comments until after blogs broke the story. Blogging helped to create a political crisis that forced Lott to step down as majority leader. Similarly, Blogs were among the driving forces behind the Rathergate scandal. To wit, Dan Rather presented documents that conflicted with accepted accounts of President Bush's military service record. Bloggers declared the documents to be forgeries and presented evidence and arguments in support of that view. Consequently, CBS apologized for what it said were inadequate reporting techniques. Many bloggers view this scandal as the advent of blogs' acceptance by the mass media both as a news source and opinion and as means of applying political pressure. The impact of these stories gave greater credibility to blogs as a medium of news dissemination. Though often seen as partisan gossips, bloggers sometimes lead the way in bringing key information to public light, with mainstream media having to follow their lead. More often, however, news blogs tend to react to material already published by the mainstream media. Meanwhile, an increasing number of experts blogged, making blogs a source of in-depth analysis. In Russia, some political bloggers have started to challenge the dominance of official, overwhelmingly pro-government media. Bloggers such as Rustem Adagamov and Alexei Navalny have many followers and the latter's nickname for the ruling United Russia Party is the Party of Crooks and Thieves, has been adopted by anti-regime protesters. This led to the Wall Street Journal calling Navalny, the man Vladimir Putin fears most, in March 2012. Mainstream Popularity By 2004, the role of blogs became increasingly mainstream, as political consultants, news services, and candidates began using them as tools for outreach and opinion forming.
Blogging was established by politicians and political candidates to express opinions on war and other issues and cemented blogs' role as a news source. Even politicians not actively campaigning, such as the UK's Labour Party's MP Tom Watson, began to blog to bond with constituents. In January 2005, Fortune magazine listed eight bloggers whom business people could not ignore. Peter Rogers, Zena Jardin, Ben Trott, Mena Trott, Jonathan Schwartz, Jason Goldman, Robert Scorbel, and Jason Calacanis. Israel was among the first national governments to set up an official blog. Under David Saranger, the Israeli Ministry of Foreign Affairs became active in adopting Web 2.0 initiatives, including an official video blog and a political blog. The Foreign Ministry also held a microblogging press conference via Twitter about its war with Hamas, with Sarango answering questions from the public in common text messaging abbreviations during a live worldwide press conference. The questions and answers were later posted on Israel Politique, the country's official political blog. The impact of blogging upon the mainstream media has also been acknowledged by governments. In 2009, the presence of the American journalism industry had declined to the point that several newspaper corporations were filing for bankruptcy, resulting in less direct competition between newspapers within the same circulation area. Discussion emerged as to whether the newspaper industry would benefit from a stimulus package by the federal government. U.S. President Barack Obama acknowledged the emerging influence of blogging upon society by saying, if the direction of the news is all blogosphere, all opinions, with no serious fact-checking, no serious attempts to put stories in context, then what you will end up getting is people shouting at each other across the void, but not a lot of mutual understanding. Between 2009 and 2012, an Orwell Prize for blogging was awarded. Community and Cataloging As the popularity of blogging continues to rise, the commercialization of blogging is rapidly increasing. Many corporations and companies collaborate with bloggers to increase advertising and engage online communities towards their products. In the book Fans, Bloggers, and Gamers, Henry Jenkins stated that bloggers take knowledge in their own hands, enabling successful navigation within and between these emerging knowledge cultures. One can see such behavior as co-optation into commodity culture insofar as it sometimes collaborates with corporate interests. But one can also see it as increasing the diversity of media culture, providing opportunities for greater inclusiveness, and making more responsive to consumers. Popularity Blogging had become such a mania that a new blog was created every second of every minute of every hour of every day. Researchers have actively analyzed the dynamics of how blogs become popular. There are essentially two measures of this, popularity through citations, as well as popularity through affiliation. The basic conclusion from studies of the structure of blogs is that while it takes time for a blog to become popular through blog roles, permalinks can boost popularity more quickly, and are perhaps more indicative of popularity and authority than blog roles since they denote that people are actually reading the blog's content and deem it valuable or noteworthy in specific cases. The Blogdex project was launched by researchers in the MIT Media Lab to crawl the web and gather data from thousands of blogs in order to investigate their social properties. Information was gathered by the tool for over four years, during which it autonomously tracked the most contagious information spreading in the blog community, ranking it by recency and popularity. It can, therefore, be considered the first instantiation of a meme tracker. The project was replaced by tailrank.com which in turn has been replaced by spinner.com. Blogs are given rankings by Alexa Internet and formerly by blog search engine Technorati based on the number of incoming links. In August 2006, Technorati found that the most linked to blog on the internet was that of Chinese actress Xu Jinglei. Chinese media Xinhua reported that this blog received more than 50 million page views, claiming it to be the most popular blog in the world. Technorati rated Boing Boing to be the most read group written blog. Blurring with the mass media Many bloggers, 
particularly those engaged in participatory journalism, are amateur journalists, and thus they differentiate themselves from the professional reporters and editors who work in mainstream media organizations. Other bloggers are media professionals who are publishing online, rather than via a TV station or newspaper, either as an add-on to a traditional media presence, or as their sole journalistic output. Some institutions and organizations see blogging as a means of getting around the filter of media gatekeepers and pushing their messages directly to the public. Many mainstream journalists, meanwhile, write their own blogs, well over 300, according to cyberjournalist.net's JBlog list. The first known use of a blog on a news site was in August 1998, when Jonathan Dube of the Charlotte Observer published one chronicling Hurricane Bonnie. Some bloggers have moved over to other media. The following bloggers have appeared on radio and television, Duncan Black, Glenn Reynolds, Marcos Mulitsas Zuniga, Alex Stefan, Anna Marie Cox, Nate Silver, and Ezra Klein. In counterpoint, Hugh Hewitt exemplifies a mass media personality who has moved in the other direction, adding to his reach in old media by being an influential blogger. Similarly, it was emergency preparedness and safety tips on air and online blog articles that captured Surgeon General of the United States Richard Carmona's attention and earned his kudos for the associated broadcasts by talk show host Lisa Tolliver and Westchester Emergency Volunteer Reserve's Medical Reserve Corps Director Marianne Partridge. Blogs have also had an influence on minority languages, bringing together scattered speakers and learners. This is particularly so with blogs in Gaelic languages. Minority language publishing can find its audience through inexpensive blogging. There are examples of bloggers who have published books based on their blogs. And more, Salam Pax, Ellen Simonetti, Jessica Cutler, Scrapple Face. Blog-based books have been given the name Look. A prize for the best blog-based book was initiated in 2005, the Lulu Blooker Prize. However, Success has been elusive offline, with many of these books not selling as well as their blogs. The book based on Julie Powell's blog, The Julie Slash Julia Project, was made into the film Julian Julia, apparently the first to do so. Consumer-Generated Advertising Consumer-Generated Advertising is a relatively new and controversial development, and it has created a new model of marketing communication from businesses to consumers among the various forms of advertising on blog. The most controversial are the sponsored posts. These are blog entries or posts and may be in the form of feedback, reviews, opinion, videos, etc. and usually contain a link back to the desired site using a keyword or several keywords. Blogs have led to some disintermediation and a breakdown of the traditional advertising model, where companies can skip over the advertising agencies and contact the customers directly via social media websites. On the other hand, new companies specialized in blog advertising have been established to take advantage of this new development as well. However, there are many people who look negatively on this new development. Some believe that any form of commercial activity on blogs will destroy the blogosphere's credibility, defamation or liability. Several cases have been brought before the national courts against bloggers concerning issues of defamation or liability. U.S. payouts related to blogging totaled $17.4 million by 2009. In some cases these have been covered by umbrella insurance. The courts have returned with mixed verdicts. Internet service providers, in general, are immune from liability for information that originates with third parties. Indo v. Carhill the Delaware Supreme Court held that stringent standards had to be met to unmask the anonymous bloggers, and also took the unusual step of dismissing the libel case itself rather than referring it back to the trial court for reconsideration. In a bizarre twist, the Cahills were able to obtain the identity of John Doe, who turned out to be the person they suspected, the town's mayor, Councilman Cahill's political rival. The Cahills amended their original complaint and the mayor settled the case rather than going to trial. In January 2007, two prominent Malaysian political bloggers, 
Jeff Uy and Ahiruddin Atan, were sued by a pro-government newspaper, the New Straits Times Press Bahad, Kalimullah bin Mashir Hazan, Hisham Uddin bin Oun, and Brendan John A. L. John Pereira over an alleged defamation. The plaintiff was supported by the Malaysian government. Following the suit, the Malaysian government proposed to register all bloggers in Malaysia in order to better control parties against their interest. This is the first such legal case against bloggers in the country. In the United States, blogger Aaron Wall was sued by Traffic Power for defamation and publication of trade secrets in 2005. According to Wired magazine, Traffic Power had been banned from Google for allegedly rigging search engine results. Wall and other white hat search engine optimization consultants had exposed Traffic Power in what they claim was an effort to protect the public. The case was dismissed for lack of personal jurisdiction and traffic power failed to appeal within the allowed time. In 2009, NDTV issued a legal notice to Indian blogger Kunta for a blog post criticizing their coverage of the Mumbai attacks. The blogger unconditionally withdrew his post, which resulted in several Indian bloggers criticizing NDTV for trying to silence critics. Brought to you by Wikividi Documentaries Would you like to